Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I just finished watching American Beauty for the first time. Uh, I chose this one because I've always wanted to review a Kevin Spacey movie on the channel and because I've just heard generally positive things about it and uh, I was not disappointed. This movie is incredibly good. Now obviously it's very taboo. It's, you know, it's socially inappropriate, I guess, for lack of better words. Um, you know, it's just taboo and risque, okay? Of course it is, but despite all that, I mean, even considering that, it's still a great movie. Uh, let's say you don't like Kevin Spacey as a human being in real life, understandable, but you can't say that he's not a great actor in this. He gives an perf amazing performance. Uh, you could say, you know, I'm not comfortable with, uh, you know, grown men dating high schoolers, you know? Totally understandable, but still, you can't deny that it's an uh, interesting premise and uh, makes for a great drama movie. So, yeah, basically everything that's taboo and risque about it is uh, integral, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So, yeah, we're going to do this into three sections this time instead of two. Normally I do positives, I do pros and cons to keep things simple. This time we're going to do pros, cons, and taboo. So the third section is going to be dedicated to all of the offensive stuff that, um, that and uh, socially inappropriate stuff that I'm just going to give my opinions on because I think that would make this video more entertaining. So there you go. And then you can decide if I'm uh, some bad person that you hate or if you understand where I come from. So there you go. American Beauty is about a man named Lester who is a middle-aged father uh, and he is sexually frustrated and hates his life. So he becomes infatuated with his teenage daughter's um, best friend, who is a high school cheerleader, and he begins to fantasize about her all the time, uh, and is acting very weird every time she comes over. Um, but the movie's actually a little bit more than that. So the movie's more of an ensemble, and I feel like Kevin Spacey's not, not the only sole focus here. So we get plenty more perspectives to follow along with. We have his wife, who also does not like her life, and um, she is cheating on him, and he ultimately finds out and doesn't care, because, yeah, he just doesn't care. Um, and uh, we also follow his daughter, Jane. Jane begins to fall for a new neighbor boy named um, Ricky, and Ricky is growing up in a particularly abusive household. Ricky's father is a uh, is pro-Nazi and is also extremely homophobic. And uh, another fun thing about Ricky is that uh, he is obsessed with filming everything, particularly things that he perceives beautiful. And here's yet another example. Whenever um, some Sometimes people call, incorrect, incorrectly call me stuff like incel and virgin and stuff like that when they couldn't be further from the truth. And every time I try to illustrate my point to them, they won't hear it because they already have their beliefs. But here's yet another character that I can show you of what I mean. So basically what I'm saying is Ricky and I are very similar people as well. I've compared myself to multiple people in other movies. So I'm going to continue to point out guys that are like myself. And Ricky is another one. Um, he's super voyeuristic, which is honestly not really a personal detail that I, I was eager to share on this channel. But that's the truth. So I'll go ahead and admit it. He, we're both extremely voyeuristic. But more importantly, we're both the good kind of creepy, okay? So whenever I say, whenever I tell people I'm the good kind of creepy, this is the kind of creepy that I'm implying. I mean kind of socially awkward, says kind of weird things, does kind of weird offbeat things, um, but there's that certain kind of mystery that draws you to them and you can't look away. So this guy, Ricky, is another character I want to add to the list of people that I'm like and people that I'm in a reference of trying to explain who I am to people because people think I'm this uh, unsolvable enigma and I'm just so weird and blah, blah, blah. But here's yet another character that I can identify with. So Ricky, yeah, liked him. Great guy. Which makes me look narcissistic, but he had something that I didn't. I have loving parents. He does not. Or maybe his mom is loving, but she's... I don't know what the deal with her was, actually. That was one of the loose ends of the film. 
I don't know if she's mentally impaired or just is so shut down from abuse, I don't know. So, but that's the one difference between me and him is that uh, he is, his parents are, the father's awful, the mother is mentally shut down, and I thankfully have great parents in real life. So that's the one difference. Anyways, moving on. We don't need to make this about myself. We're talking about the movie. So American Beauty is about a middle-aged man who becomes infatuated with his teenage daughter's best friend. Um, and uh, so, and then we talked about those two. The other people, actually that's it. So that's, yeah. This might be a little bit of a scatterbrained review, I apologize. I actually typed out my thoughts very well. This is one of the better written reviews I've ever made. So if you go look in the description right now, I will have a full hand-tailored, hand-written, no plagiarism in there, entirely written by me. And I do that for every movie I watch, but this one was particularly good. So if I am a little bit more scatterbrained here, keep in mind I wrote down a pretty good review in the description that you can read. I also make those for um, hearing impaired people. Uh, because I don't put subtitles in the video, so if you are hearing impaired, then you can go to the description and you can see my thoughts. So, yeah. But uh, let's hop into the first of the three sections for this movie. So, the positives section. The positives is that the movie is highly intriguing. It's uh, an incredibly well-executed drama. It's had me glued to the screen start to finish. It was just generally highly interesting. It was inherently interesting because of how unique and taboo it is. Um, I respected how risque it is because this is a pretty popular American movie and it's basically doing and saying everything you're not supposed to in American society, so I respected that. Um, yeah, it was just a very shocking, in a good way, movie. I've seen a movie, I've seen shock movies that are bad. For example, I watched Cuties on Netflix, which is, just fails at its objective and it's just cringe and inappropriate. Uh, but this movie is, um, I guess, a similar caliber, kind of, but not really, but it's the closest thing I can think of. Um, but this one does it correctly. This one achieves its goal, which is just to be an entertaining drama, um, showing the, the morally corrupt dark side of a seemingly normal American family, and it does it really well. So it's, it's an extremely good movie. I highly recommend it. Even if you don't like Kevin Spacey, even if you think the subject matter is inappropriate, I guarantee you the movie is guaranteed to entertain you, guaranteed to intrigue you, and uh, it's, it's a must-watch. It really is a must-watch in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, and uh, the, the actors really, really sell the experience because... Honestly, the story is somewhat ridiculous, uh, especially for just a movie standard, but I f the, the performances of the actors are so passionate and of high class and quality that it really sells everything for me. Because we could have had a ridiculous, for example, we could have had a ridiculous uh, caricature of a neo-Nazi white supremacist and it just would have been stupid and eye-rolling and over the top but instead it's a realistic depiction really well acted um, of an abusive father so it, it's the movie's executed at the highest level and yeah is not offensive at all the only reason you'd be offense, offended at this movie is if you go into it wanting to be offended if you go into this movie you know, with a bad attitude, or a negative mindset, or a virtue signaling mindset. Like, oh, I'm gonna watch this movie and just point out all the things that I personally disagree with. You're, you're watching it wrong. You're, you're just gonna ruin it for yourself, so. It's a highly entertaining, highly engaging, well-acted, well-executed, um, very, very interesting movie, and I highly recommend it. For the negative section, so the entire film is somewhat directionless. We're not really going anywhere at any point. Um, there's not really a real purpose, theme, or message. So it's a little bit fluffy and disposable because of that. Uh, the other negative is the ending. So the ending is not wholly 100% satisfying to me. It felt a little bit more out of pocket and random. Like just random bad, um, bad luck. Rather than serving a greater purpose or being written in a way where it's like, everything culminates and makes sense. It's like, okay, he, he just got unlucky, you know? It's just bad luck at the end there. So didn't really, the ending wasn't really there for me. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but it just could have been better. And the entire movie doesn't really have a direction or uh, a message to take away home with you. So, okay. Um, and now for the controversial section. This is the fun part. This is all the politically driven, 
socially incorrect stuff that I say, that I'm going to say that might potentially offend people, that's going to make me look mad, all that stuff. First of all, here's some advice. So, I really, really am a advocate for free speech, don't ever hold anything back, I hate virtue signaling, and in general I'm anti-conformity, anti-society uh, in general, okay? Now some of my opinions are still going to line in with mainstream belief, but just keep in mind that I'm someone who really let, I, I let it all out. I let it all out. I don't hold anything back. I never virtue signal. And that's how you know, I always say this, that's how you know I'm a guy you can trust. Because a guy you can trust is going to tell you all of the stuff you're not supposed to say. Rather than me hiding behind false beliefs or trying to be someone I'm not. So I'm a trustworthy guy because of that. So let's go over all the taboo slash incorrect, politically incorrect stuff in this. And I'll give my brief opinion on each of them. So first of all, Kevin Spacey. He is a bad guy in real life. I do believe that. I do believe Kevin Spacey is a bad guy in real life. So that's my first belief. That's a pretty common mainstream opinion. Nothing crazy there. But we're just going to go through them all. So yes, Kevin Spacey is a bad guy in real life. However, he's an incredible actor in this film. Next taboo thing, there is a real life 16 or 17 year old. Don't know exactly because I googled it and I found differing results. People say one thing and others say different things. So either 16 or 17, there is a real life 16 or 17 year old who goes topless in this film. And this is the first movie I've reviewed where there's technically um, nudity with legal minors, I guess. So my opinion on that is, first of all, it's not pedophilia at all. At all. Pedophilia is for uh, prepubescent children, and she is obviously not a prepubescent children. So in this movie, anytime someone uses the P word with this movie, you're just blatantly wrong. So there's my first tab, there's my first socially, politically incorrect opinion. Nothing about this movie is pedophiliac whatsoever. Not even the concept or the plot itself. Uh, he's falling in love with a high schooler. That doesn't make him a pedophile, that makes him a creepy guy. It makes him a creepy guy who ha is trying to have an inappropriate relation with someone way younger than him who's not even out of high school yet. And he's also cheating on his wife. That's obviously a bad thing, but it does not make him a pedophile. So, no nothing about this movie's pedophiliac whatsoever. Now my dog's making noises. Um, as for the nude scene itself, because it's, you know, somewhat illegal, um, I guess. Not really, but like somewhat illegal. The, th the scene's totally fine. I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, for me, it was uh, one of the few climaxes of the film, which is, remember, I'm, I'm not using that... I'm not using that word in the other sense. Uh, in fact, this is one of the least erotic nude scenes I've ever seen in my life. Um, but I just mean that it's one of the high points of the film where things get kind of extreme and serious. So it's one of the rare few climaxes of the film. It's also important and integral to um, communicating the status of how Jane and um, Ricky feel for each other. It's kind of a wholesome young person moment as well. So I don't think there's any problem with that scene whatsoever. So I think it's totally fine to keep in there. No issue with that at all. What else is controversial? The homophobia and the slurs. So I'm someone who does occasionally criticize uh, slurs usage in movies. For example, Step Brothers has an unnecessary amount of slurs in it that don't serve any purpose except for failed attempts at laughs. I still like Step Brothers, but that's just one of my problems with that movie. Um, but this movie, I have no problem with the slurs or homophobia whatsoever. It's all accurate, it's realistic, and it's executed in a tactful, high-level way that makes sense. So obviously his father's a terrible guy, Ricky's father's a terrible guy, and so it's more than okay for him to be doing and saying terrible things. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's totally okay. Is there anything else controversial? Probably, I mean, everything about the movie is controversial. Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is that um, what's uh, Kevin Spacey's character in this, Lester, I, I do think he's a bad guy. I do want to preface that. Yes, he does redeem himself by the end of the film, but I do want to leave you with that thought. I do think Lester's a bad guy. He's not a character you root for. Um, the only reason he becomes somewhat more tolerable and likable in the film is because, one, the ending really strongly redeems him. 
um, in more than one way. And two, everyone around him is kind of just as bad as he is. Like the Nazi father is worse than he is. The cheating wife is uh, a little less bad than him or maybe equally as bad as him. So everyone around him is just as morally corrupt and down bad as he is. Even stuff like the whole corporation firing him to save the, the bottom line is stuff that you can kind of relate to. But overall, I would still say that Lester's not a good person. I, I just wanted to leave you with that thought. So, do you think Lester's a good person? Do you think the redemption's enough to save him? I think it was a not in the right direction, but I don't think it, like, totally redeems him or anything. So, American Beauty's going to get a 9 out of 10. Highly engaging, super fun, super interesting, and, uh, yeah, highly recommend it. Really great film, great drama, great thriller, uh, very taboo and risque and one of a kind.